Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today, I'll be showing you how to make the coolest top. The inspo for this one came from a few different places, but our main source of inspiration was from our festival fringe. We've always wanted to make a tank top version, so here we are, older classics to make new ones. Speaking of, if you're a fan of classic crochet designs or something a bit new, you're in the right place. We've got hundreds of classic and modern crochet designs with plenty more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado, for this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 170 grams of yarn, and that's 320 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below, use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite villain of any story. For me, I actually think a lot are super cool, but my ultimate favorite is probably Yzma from Emperor's New Groove. I've always thought that she was super fabulous. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project and will be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we are all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we are all going to grab our 5mm hook and get started on our cups. So we are all first going to start by making an even number chain that reaches from the outside of our chest over to mid collarbone. So for me, I need a total of 2 inches or 5 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 12. And now that I have my chain, we are going to be doing a double crochet row. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain three. Now that chain three doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain and we need the height. And to do our double crochet, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the fourth chain from our hook. We're gonna yarn over, pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And from here, continue to put one double crochet into every chain. Now that we've just made our way across our chain, putting one double crochet into every chain, our following rows are going to be double crochet rows. So let's just get the following row started. Start with a chain three. That still doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. Flip our work, and then just make our way all the way down, putting one double crochet into every stitch. And then at the end of the row, chain three, flip our work, and then repeat. What we're going to do is continue to repeat our double crochet row with no increases and no decreases until this can reach from the bottom of our chest up to mid chest. And I will meet you guys back right after an odd number row. All right, so I am back with the first bit of my cup. Now I have a total of three rows and my height is just about an inch and a half or four centimeters. Now from here, we're going to start working on the curve of our cup that's going to fill out the rest of it. So what we're going to do from here is put one double crochet into every stitch, leaving that last stitch because we will be doing an increase of five. So getting started on this row, chain three, flip our work, and then put one double crochet into every stitch, leaving that last stitch, and then I will meet you back. All right, so I've just put one double crochet into every stitch. Into that last stitch, we're going to do an increase of five, and that's just going to be five double crochets into that last stitch. 
So all together, let's yarn over. Insert into that last stitch with our first double crochet, with our second double crochet, with our third double crochet. And just as a quick tip, we are going to want to insert our stitch marker into that third double crochet, the one that we just did, so we know where our middle stitch is. But since we only have three double crochets, we have two more left to do into this last stitch. So here's my fourth, and here's my fifth. Now, as you can see, since we just did an increase of five, our work has curved over the corner. And now we're going to be putting two double crochets into every side row until we don't have any more side rows left. So this is my first available side row right over here. So I'm going to yarn over, just find that top loop, and then insert with one double crochet, and then into that same top loop with a second double crochet, and then let's do the next one. Into my following side row, which is this one for me, one double into that same top loop with my second double and then continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. All right, so I have just finished up my first curve row for my cup. Now from here, we're going to basically be repeating this row, but instead of an increase of five, we're going to do an increase of three. So since we're along the edge, we're going to chain three, flip our work, and then put one double crochet into every stitch until we reach our stitch marker. Now that we are at our stitch marker stitch, we're going to be doing an increase of three. So I'm gonna take the stitch marker out for now, but don't put it too far. And then into that following stitch, I'm gonna insert with one double, into that same stitch with a second, and then into that same stitch with my third double crochet. Now into that second double crochet that we made or into that middle stitch, we're going to insert our stitch marker into there so we know where the middle stitch is and then make our way down, putting one double crochet into every stitch. Now at the end of the row, we're going to chain three, flip our work, and then put one double crochet into every stitch until we reach our stitch marker stitch again, and then I'll remind you how we're going to do our increase just once more. All right, so I finished up my second curve row and then got started with my third, and I've double crocheted my way all the way down to my stitch marker stitch. Now, just to do our increase of three together once more, we're gonna take out our stitch marker, and then into that middle stitch, we're gonna insert with our first double, with our second double, and then with our third double crochet. And remembering to insert your stitch marker into that second double crochet that we made, or our middle stitch. And then from here, continue to put one double crochet into every stitch. And from here, all we're gonna do is continue to repeat these two rows. So basically a double crochet into every stitch, and then once we reach our stitch marker stitch, do an increase of three double crochets while making sure that we insert our stitch marker into that middle stitch, and then that's it. Continue to do this until this portion can reach from the side of our chest over to the middle of our chest, making sure that we meet back right after an even number row, so the inside of our cup. Once we have that, go ahead, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back to show you what it looks like. All right, so I am back with the entirety of my cup all finished up. Now I have a total of eight rows. My total base width is six inches or 15 centimeters, and my total height is four inches or 10 centimeters. Now I did do a chain up of one and cut right after I finished my last row, and what we're gonna do is a second cup that is exactly the same. But the only difference is that once we reach our last row, do not do a chain up of one and cut, because we are going to need to connect the two cups together. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up my second cup. As you guys can see, I didn't do a chain up of one and cut because we're going to need to connect the two cups. So what we're going to do from here is take the cup that our hook is in and all we're gonna do is chain one and then we're going to slip stitch it into the inner corner stitch of our other cup. So go ahead and find that bottom corner stitch. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through everything, do a chain up of one to secure. And that is our chain space in between our cups. And then we're going to cut. All right, 
So now that both of our cups are all finished up, the next thing we're going to start working on is our chest detail. So first things first, we're going to need to be inserting our five millimeter hook into this top corner stitch that we have into one of our cups. And then we're going to make an odd number chain that reaches all the way up to our shoulder. So I've already measured mine out. I need just about six and a half inches or 17 centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 29. So I am back and I've just finished up my chain that reached up to my shoulder. As you guys can see, I did do a chain up of one and cut, and we're actually gonna be doing the same thing on the other side, and then we're gonna work our way all the way across. So I'm just gonna flip my work, insert my hook into this top corner stitch, make that same chain, and then I'll meet you guys back once when that chain is all finished up. So now that I've made my chain, we're gonna get started on our first row for our chest detail, which is going to be a mesh row. So what we're going to do is block off that last chain, and then we're gonna start with a chain three. One, two, three. That chain three doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And then after that chain three, we're going to chain one extra. That last chain, or the fourth chain that we just made, is gonna count as a chain. And then from here, we're going to double crochet into the sixth chain from our hook. So here's one, two, three, four, and then five. We're gonna yarn over, and then insert our hook into the following chain. Pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and that is our first chain space. Let's do this again. We're going to chain one, skip one chain, and then into the following, insert with a double crochet. Just like that, let's just do one more. Chain one, skip a chain, double crochet into the following. And we're gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way down, and we should have just one chain left. All right, so we've just made our way all the way down with our double crochet, chain one, and we have left just one chain left. Now from here, we're going to start working across the top of our cup, but we are not gonna be doing a chain space in between the strap and the cup just because we need it to curve. So since we should all have just one chain left, what we're going to do is prepare for a double crochet, and then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the second stitch that we have into the cup. Now, since our chain should actually be inserted into that first stitch, we're just gonna insert our hook into that following stitch with a double crochet, and that should form kind of like a triangle like that. And then from here, we're gonna continue on with the stitch sequence that we've been doing. So chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet into the following. Again, chain one, skip one stitch, and then double crochet into the following. And we're gonna to continue to do this until we reach the corner stitch or that stitch marker stitch within this first cup. And our last double crochet should be worked into that stitch. All right, so I am back and I've just finished up working across the top of my cup. Now the last double crochet that we all should have done should have been worked into that stitch marker stitch. And now we're going to do our middle detail. So right before we get that started, we're just going to do a chain one. And then from here, we're going to count out the amount of rows that we have when it comes to our height. So if you guys have my numbers, I have a total of eight rows when it comes to my cup, including this netting row that we just did. I have a total of nine rows. So I'm gonna be doing a total of nine yarn overs because this is just going to be one long piece that connects our two cups together. So we're going to want to make sure that after we do our chain one, once we do all of our yarn overs, we wanna make sure that this is nice and tight Otherwise, once we start working into the other side, it could be a little loose right here. So what I'm gonna do is just do my yarn over and make sure that I'm keeping it as taut as possible. So I'm gonna yarn over once, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now from here to connect it, we're going to be inserting our hook into that chain space that we made in between our cups. So making sure that we are definitely hanging on to our work. We're going to bring our hook down into that chain space. This is my chain space right over here. I'm gonna insert my hook into there, making sure I'm pulling nice and tight, yarn over and pull through. Now from here, we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. So for me, I'm going to yarn over, pull through two, making sure we're still pulling nice and taut, yarn over, 
pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, 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 and now two. There we go. And now we should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now this could take just a couple tries, but we should have this nice little twist working our way all the way down. And then also a quick tip, our cup should lay flat. If it cups up just a little bit, that's completely fine as well. We just wanna make sure that it's not completely cupped over. If it is, it may have been a little bit too tight, so you may wanna redo it. But once we have this, we're going to chain one and then double crochet into that next cups stitch marker stitch. So I'm going to chain one and then yarn over into my next cups stitch marker. I'm gonna insert my hook into there with a double crochet. Now both of our cups are nice and connected. And then from here, we're gonna do our netting, making our way all the way across. So just as a refresher, we're going to chain one, skip a stitch into that following stitch, double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, and then double crochet. And we're gonna to continue to do this, making our way all the way across the top of our cup. And now that I've made my way all the way across the top of my cup, I'm now gonna to continue to do my netting, making my way all the way up my chain. So since we have done our last double crochet, right before that stitch that our chain is in, we aren't going to do a chain. We're just going to yarn over, preparing for a double crochet. And then we're gonna insert our hook into that first chain that we have. So this is my first chain right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into there with a double crochet. Chain one, skip a chain, and then into that following chain, double crochet. And then that's it. We're gonna to continue to do this, making our way all the way up until we don't have any more chains left to work into. All right, so we are back. We have just made our way all the way up our chain with our netting. And now our following row is gonna be pretty simple, just a half double crochet row, one into every stitch, making my way all the way up to this corner. So let's just do the first one. Let's all start with a chain two. Now this is gonna be pretty simple. Yarn over, preparing for a half double. Insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row with a half double. Let's do the next. Yarn over. Our following stitch should be this chain space, so we can just go ahead and insert our hook into that entire gap. Pull through, once we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three, let's do this again. Yarn over, into that following stitch, yarn over, pull through three. And just continue to do this until we reach the other straps corner. All right, so we are back and our half double crochet row is all finished up and now we're gonna do another row of netting which is going to be just a little bit smaller because instead of double crochets, we're gonna be doing half double crochets. So right after our last half double crochet, we're going to chain two. That's gonna count as our turning chain, not as a stitch. We're going to chain one extra and that third chain is going to count as our chain. And we're gonna flip our work. Now from here, just like how we did for our first row of netting, we're going to skip one stitch, half double crochet into the following. That forms our first chain space. Let's do another. Chain one, skip one stitch, half double crochet into the next. And we're just going to continue to do this, making our way all the way up until we reach the other corner of our strap. All right, so now that this netting row is all finished up, this is our half double netting row, we're gonna be doing one more half double netting row. So we're gonna be repeating. So from here, we're gonna chain two. That doesn't count as a stitch. We're going to do an extra chain for a total of three. That last chain counts as a chain. We're going to flip our work. We are going to skip that first available stitch, which is going to be the chain space from our previous row. Yarn over, and then into the top of our next stitch, which should be the top of our half double crochet. We're gonna half double crochet right into there. And that is our first chain space. Let's just do one more. Chain one, skip one stitch, which is our chain space. Yarn over and then into that following stitch, which is the top of that half double crochet, one half double crochet. And then we're gonna to continue to do this until we reach the other straps corner. 
All right, so I am back and I have just made my way all the way up with my second netting row. And now we're just going to single crochet all the way across. But we are gonna have to do some decreases within our single crochet row just to make sure that this stays nice and taut around our neck. So we're gonna start by doing a chain one at the end of this row. And then we're all gonna start by doing nine single crochets. So it's going to be into every stitch and into every chain space. So this is my first stitch that I have right here, should be the top of my half double crochet. So I'm gonna insert my hook into there with one single crochet. And then my following stitch is this chain space. So I'm just gonna insert my hook into that chain space with a single crochet. And now we have just done two stitches. Let's do the next two. This is the top of my following half double crochet. So go ahead and insert your hook into there with just one single. And then our following stitch is this chain space. So just into that entire chain space, insert with a single crochet and continue to do this until we have a total of nine stitches. All right, so I'm back and I just made my nine single crochets. And just as an FYI, this is going to be for every size. Now, after our nine single crochets, we're gonna be doing a decrease of two single crochets. So the last single crochet that we should have done should have been the stitch on top of our half double crochet. Now, if it looks like it's in that chain space, that's completely fine, that's just what it looks like. But the next available stitch that we should have should be our chain space. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that chain space, pull through, and then into the top of our half double crochet from our previous row, insert my hook into there as well. We're gonna yarn over, pull through that loop, and then once we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all three, and then that's it. Our following row should be a chain space, so insert your hook into there with one single, into the top of that next half double crochet with another single, and it's just gonna be a repeat. So continue to make my way down until I have a total of nine single crochets, and then do a decrease of two single crochets and then repeat that stitch sequence. Continue to do this until we reach the other corner and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so my single crochet row is all finished up and now we're going to do another netting row and this is going to be a half double crochet netting row. So at the end of our row, we're gonna chain two. That chain two is our turning chain. We're going to chain one extra for a total chain of three, but that last chain counts as a chain, and then we're gonna flip our work. Now from here, we are going to skip that first stitch, half double crochet into the following, so the same way that we did our previous netting row. So let's just do another one, chain one, skip a stitch, half double crochet into the following, and I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Okay, so we just finished up our next netting row, and now we're going to do another half double crochet row. But just like how we did our single crochet row, we're gonna have to do some decreases. So at the end of the row, we're going to chain two and flip our work. And just like how we did our single crochet row, we're gonna be doing nine half double crochets and then decreasing into the 10th. So just to get this started, we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that first stitch from our previous row, which should be the top of our half double crochet. That's our first stitch, yarn over, into that chain space with our second half double crochet and continue to do this until we have a total of nine half double crochets. And now that we have our nine half double crochets, we're gonna be decreasing into the 10th and how we do our decrease of two half double crochets is by inserting our hook into that following stitch, which mine is this chain space. Also into that following stitch that we have, which should be the top of our half double crochets, yarn over, pull through. Once we have those four loops, yarn over, pull through all four, and then repeat. Nine half double crochets, and then a decrease until we reach the end of the row. All right, so now that our decreasing half double crochet row is all finished up, we're gonna be doing another netting row, but this netting row is going to have some decreases within it. So from here, we're going to do a chain three because this is going to be a double crochet decreasing row. So chain three, flip our work and what we're gonna do is automatically yarn over. That total of chain three is just going to count as our turning chain. You're going to skip that first stitch and then into the following, double crochet. So the same as our other netting rows but without that chain that we do. And then once we have that, we're going to chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet into the following, and then we're going to do another one of these decreases. So it's gonna form kind of a triangle. Yarn over, we aren't gonna do our chain. 
skip one stitch, double crochet into the next. So as you guys can see, slight triangle, more of a square shape, and then triangle. So let's just do another set together. After this decrease, we're going to chain one, yarn over, skip one stitch, double crochet into the following. That's our normal net. And then from here, we're going to do our decrease net. So yarn over, skip a stitch, and then double crochet. And this is what our pattern should start to look like. And we're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way down. I have just finished up my decrease double crochet netting row. And now we're going to do another netting row, which is going to be a half double crochet row. So right before we get started on that row, if you guys are going in with my numbers, if you guys have an extra stitch when it comes to doing our netting row, that's completely normal. Just go ahead and put one stitch into that last stitch. So since I did double crochets for this stitch, I put one double crochet into there. But if you guys are doing a half double crochet row, put one half double crochet into there. But now to get started on our following row, we're going to chain two. That chain two is our turning chain. We're going to chain an extra one. That's going to count as our chain and flip our work. And now from here, we're going to yarn over preparing for a half double crochet. Now, regardless if you guys have our double stitches at the very end or not, we're going to be half double crocheting into the chain spaces of our previous row. So just into that first available gap that we have, insert your hook into that gap with a half double crochet that forms our first chain space. Let's do this again. Chain one into that following chain space, half double crochet, and then that's it. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down. So I'm back and I've just finished up the last row when it comes to doing our chest detail. Now we should all have a total of nine rows and we can do a chain up a one and cut. And now we can get started on the back panel and that's going to be pretty simple. So getting started on the back panel, we're all going to start by making a chain for the same amount of double crochet rows that we have when we started off our cup. Multiply that times two. So just as an example, I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows when it comes to our cup. And then since we're doubling it, I'm going to be doing a chain of 16. And now that we have our chain, we will be blocking off that last chain, do a chain two, and now we're going to do our half double crochet row. So yarn over and insert your hook into that third chain from our hook with a half double crochet, and then continue to put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. So I've just put one half double crochet into every chain and into the last one, we're going to be doing an increase of two half double crochets. So starting with the yarn over, insert your hook into that last chain with two half doubles. So there's my first and then into that same last chain, there's my second. Now that's our increase for our half double crochet row. Now the back panel is going to be solid. So our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, but that's not going to have any increases or decreases. So we're just going to chain one flip our work and then we're going to find the last stitch from our previous row and then insert your hook into there with a slip stitch. Let's do the following slip stitch together. Insert your hook into that next stitch's back loop. Once we have those two loops, yarn over, pull through both and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And now that we're at the end of our row two, our following row is going to be a half double crochet row again, but now within the back loops. So we're going to chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. Flip our work, yarn over, and then find that first available stitch and then insert your hook into that back loop, pull through, pull through three, and then just to do one more, yarn over, into that next stitch's back loop, pull through, pull through three, and continue to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one so that we can do just one more increase together. All right, so we are back and now into that last back loop, we're gonna be doing another increase. So insert your hook into that last stitches back loop with one half double and then into that same back loop with a second half double crochet. And now from here, when it comes to doing our back panel, we are gonna be measuring it to the front of our body instead of the back, just because that's a little bit easier. But what we're going to do from here is just continue to repeat these two rows until we have a portion that can reach from mid underarm over to the corner of our underarm. Now a really quick tip that I have for you guys when it comes to doing this, we wanna make sure that we don't have too many of these rows. 
because once when we have this portion all finished up, we are going to need to make the same chain count that we did for the front panel that reaches all the way up to our shoulders. And if we have too many of these rows, the back panel may be a little bit longer than the front panel, which is okay, but not what we want because we want everything to be as symmetrical as possible. So I'm actually gonna stop after my three rows because if we do need width for the back panel, we can do it within the main back portion and not within the underarms. But if you guys need more underarms, please feel free to add some. It should all even out regardless. So go ahead and continue to repeat these two rows until this reaches from mid underarm over to the corner of our underarm, making sure that we end right after a half double crochet row. And I am actually all done. I just wanna keep these three rows from my underarm for the back panel. So from here, once we have our underarm portion all finished up, we're going to make the same chain count that we made for the front panel that reaches all the way up to our shoulders. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a total chain of 29. So from here, right after my increase, I'm going to make a chain of 29. Now once when I have my chain, I will be blocking off that last chain. I'm going to do a chain one. That chain doesn't count as a stitch. That's just our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off, we're gonna insert with a slip stitch. So go ahead and insert your hook into that chain, yarn over, pull through everything. Let's do this again. Into that following chain, insert your hook, pull through everything, into that following chain, insert and pull through. And we're just gonna continue to put one slip stitch into every chain until we reach the body portion. And just a really quick tip that I have for you guys when it comes to doing our slip stitches is make sure that we're not accidentally tugging too tightly on our working yarn after we finish every stitch. Otherwise, the following row can be just a little bit too tight to work into. And now that we have just slip stitched all the way down our chain, we're going to need to slip stitch it into the body. So all we're gonna do is turn our work if we have to, find that first stitch, insert your hook into that back loop, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then from there, at the end of the row, chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And then we're just gonna continue to repeat our back loop slip stitch and back loop half double crochet row until this reaches across our back, making sure that we end right after back loop slip stitch row. Now we would like to make sure that we have the same width that we have when it comes to the chest piece of the front panel. So make sure that it ends around the same place that it starts within the front panel, and then on the other side as well. I will meet you guys back once when I have the entirety of my back panel all finished up. So I am back and I've just finished the main width of my back panel. I now have a total of 36 rows and my width is just about eight and a half inches or 22 centimeters unstretched. Now from here, we're gonna have to close this off with our underarm. So we're all gonna start by inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that reached up to our shoulder. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a chain of 29. So along this end, counting from the top, I counted down 29 stitches and then inserted my stitch marker. Now, since we all should have ended right after back loop slip stitch row, we should be along the bottom. So from here, just chain two, flip our work and then put one half double crochet into every back loop, leaving two stitches right before our stitch marker so that we can do a decrease together. All right, so now that we've made our way all the way down with our back loop half doubles, we should have left two stitches right before our stitch marker. So to do our decrease, we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that second to last back loop, pull through into that last back loop, pull through, should have four loops on our hook, so just yarn over, pull through all four. And now from here, we're gonna be doing our back loop slip stitch row, but since we didn't do an increase on the other side of our underarm, we're not gonna do a decrease here. So just chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And that's pretty much it. We're just gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as our underarm portion. So at the end of this row, we're just gonna chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch while maintaining a decrease of two into the last two stitches. And then if you guys have more rows than that, a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. I'll meet you guys back once we have the entirety of our underarm portion all finished up, right after we do a chain up of one and cut. I have just finished up the entirety of my underarm and I did do a chain up of one and cut. Now I have a total of 39 rows. My width is now just about nine inches or 23 centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to single crochet across the tops of our piece, starting with our back panel. So what we're gonna do is insert our hook into the top corner stitch of our back panel. 
you're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and then two single crochets into every side half double crochet row, so let's get this started. Now this is my first side slip stitch row right here. It should be the same for everyone, so we're just gonna find that top loop. Now it could be the same stitch that our chain one is in, and then we're just going to do one single crochet. Let's do the next one. Our following side row should be our side half double crochet row. So find that top loop and then insert your hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one, and then there's two single crochets. And that's it. Let's just do one more set together. This is my following side row, which is a side slip stitch. So find that top loop, insert your hook with one single crochet, and then into that following side row, which is our side half double crochet row. Insert your hook into that top loop with one. And then since it's a side half double, into that same top loop with your second single crochet. And then that's it. We're gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way across. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut. So our single crochet row across the top of our back panel is all finished up. I've done a chain up of one and cut, and now we're going to single crochet across the top of our front panel as well, so let's go ahead and grab that. So as you can see, I have already single crocheted across the top of one of my shoulder portions when it comes to the front panel, so I'm just gonna be doing the other side with you guys, because they're both the same. So we are all going to start by inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of one of our shoulder portions, insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Now what we're gonna be doing is two single crochets into every side double crochet row, and then one single crochet into every side half double and into every side single crochet row. So since we should all have these same amount of rows, I'm just gonna do this entire portion with you guys. So since we're along the outer edge, the first side row that we should have should be a side double crochet, so we're gonna be putting two single crochets into that gap. So start by inserting your hook into that top loop with one single crochet, and then into that same top loop with another single crochet. So two single crochets into that first side row. Our following side row should be a side half double. So find that top loop and insert your hook into there with just one single crochet and making sure that we're not tugging too tightly because we want this to be relaxed. Now our following few rows are just gonna be one single crochet into each of those following rows. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, and five side rows, that's just gonna have one single crochet into each of those. So into this next side row, find that top loop with one single crochet into that following side row, another single crochet. Our next side row should be our side single. So just find that top loop, insert with one, and then one single crochet into each of the following two side rows. And once we have that, we should have just two side rows left, our second to last should be a side double crochet row. So insert your hook into that one with two single crochets, and then into our last side row with just one single crochet, because that was a side half double crochet row. Once we have that, we can tug on this just a little bit to make sure that it's relaxed. But from here, we're just going to chain one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So now that we have just finished up single crocheting across the top of our shoulder portions for the front panel, the last thing we're going to have to do before we seam everything together is do a prep row along the side of our cups to make seaming the sides a little bit easier. So first things first, we're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of our cup. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. From here, we're gonna be putting two single crochets into every side row, so let's get that started. So this is my first side row that I have right here. I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook into there with my first single crochet, and then into that same top loop with my second single crochet. And that's basically it. We're just gonna to continue to do this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into, so let's just do the next one. This is my following side row. Insert my hook into there with one, and then into that same side row with two. Now a really quick tip, we should have the same amount of chains that we made when we started our underarm portion for the back panel, but just continue to do this until we don't have any more side rows left. When we don't, 
do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so we have just finished up single crocheting along the sides of our cup, and now we are all ready to seam the front and back panel together. So first things first, let's grab our back panel, and then we're gonna flip it, making sure that the ribbing that we have is face down. Next, we're going to place the top panel on top of our back panel, and then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back. Now we're gonna start with our outside loop slip stitch seam just to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're going to get started by finding that first available stitch into the front panel, and then we're gonna insert our hook only in through that front loop. We're gonna find that following stitch into the back panel, insert our hook only into that back loop. Once we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert in through that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert in through that back loop, pull through all three, and that's it. We're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we did here on the other side. All right, so now that our sides are all seamed together, the next thing we're going to do is seam our shoulders. So now we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out because this single crochet seam is gonna be along the inside. Next, we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And this is gonna be pretty simple, just single crochet, making sure we're working into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So just to do the first few, find that first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, first stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet. Let's do the next one. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert, next stitch into the back panel, insert, and then single, and that's it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches into the front panel to work into. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So now that everything is all seamed together, we are now going to single crochet across the bottom of our piece to prep for the length of the bottom. So we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into any one of the side rows along the bottom. I'm just, I'm just gonna start off by showing you guys the back panel first. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're gonna be putting two single crochets into every side half double, one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and that's working across our back. So let's just do the first few. Now my first side row is the side half double. So I'm gonna find that top loop and insert my hook into there with two single crochets. So there is one. And then also insert my hook into there with my second single crochet. Now my following side row is a side slip stitch row, so I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook with just one single crochet, and that's it. I'm gonna to continue to do this, make my way across my back. Now once we reach the bottom of the front panel, along the outer edges of our cups, we should have regular stitches to work into. So I'm just gonna be putting one single crochet into each of these stitches, and then once we reach our side double crochet rows along the bottom of our cups, I'll meet you guys back. So I've just made my way across my back panel with my single crochet row, and then across the first half of my cup. Now I'm at the bottom of my side double crochet row, so I just wanna remind you guys that across the side double crochet rows, we're gonna be putting two single crochets into each of those. So we're just gonna do the first one together, and this is my first side double crochet row right over here. So I'm just gonna insert my hook into that top loop with one, and then into that same top loop with my second single crochet, and then that's it. Continue to put two single crochets into every side row, and also don't forget that we did do a chain one in between our cups. So single crochet into there as well, but just continue to do this, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I will meet you back. All right, so I am back, and I have just finished up single crocheting across the bottom of my piece. Now, right before we get started on the length of our piece, we're going to want to try this on just to make sure that this single crochet row fits. Now, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as the bottom portion can stretch. 
So when you try it on, you want to make sure that it's easy to put on, meaning that it can fit over the shoulders. And then once when it is on, it's not too loose. So if it is too loose, you might want to redo a couple stitches with either a tighter stitch or even subtracting some stitches if you guys need. Or if it's too small, then you guys can go in with a looser stitch or you guys can add in a couple stitches as well since this bottom portion doesn't really need to be done in any multiples of any number. So once when this single crochet portion is all finished up, we can get started on the length of our bottom. So first things first, we're going to want to make sure that our work is flipped right side out right after we slip stitch into that chain space. And now from here, we're going to make a chain the length that we would like for the bottom portion to be. Now I want mine to be long, so I'm going to make a total of nine inches or 23 centimeters, and that's gonna be a chain of 45 for me. And now that we have our chain, we're gonna be doing a half double crochet row all the way back up. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And from here, we're gonna yarn over preparing for a half double crochet. And into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, insert with a half double crochet, and continue to put one half double crochet into every chain. So now that we have made our way all the way down with our half double crochet row, we're going to need to connect it into the base. But since our back loop half double crochet and back loop slip stitch row sequence isn't reversible, we're going to need to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out and that we're working clockwise or to the left. And then we're going to start by counting up the next two available stitches. So here's one, here's two. We're going to slip stitch into that stitch to close off this first half double crochet row. And then our following row is going to be back loop slip stitch row. Since that's a short stitch, we're just going to slip stitch up one stitch and then flip our work. And now from here, we're gonna be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So start by finding the last stitch from our previous row. Insert your hook into there, yarn over, pull through everything. Pretty simple, pretty much like how we did the back panel. So continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then at the end of the row, chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And then I'll meet you guys back at the base. And now that we are back at the base, we're gonna slip stitch it into the base together just once more. So from here, since we just finished up our back loop half double crochet row, we're gonna count up one, count up two stitches into the base, slip stitch into there to close off the half double crochet row, and then to work our way up to the back loop slip stitch row, slip stitch into that following stitch, flip our work, and then make our way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then that's it. Continue to repeat these two rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches into the base left to work into. And then I will meet you guys back so we can seam it all together. So I've just made my way all the way around with my back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to seam it together. And this seam is gonna be the same seam that we did for the side, and that's gonna be an outside loop slip stitch seam. So first things first, make sure that our work is flipped right side out. Now from here, we're going to find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. We're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert only in through that back loop. And then once we have all three loops, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. Let's do this just once more. Next stitch into the front panel, insert in through that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert in through that back loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and then that's it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up a one and cut. All right, so now that our bottom is all seamed up, we can start to do our armhole detail. So first things first, we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, and then we're gonna be inserting our hook into our last side seam stitch that we have. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up and over our armhole. And then we are gonna have just a few underarm rows to work into, but we already know how to do those. We're gonna be putting two single crochets into every side half double, and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. I'll meet you guys back once we have this single crochet row all finished up right after we slip stitch into that chain space. All right, so I'm back, and as you guys can see, I have already finished up cleaning up one underarm. I did do a chain up of one and cut. Once we have that one, go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. 
Once we have both of them all finished up, we are actually all done with our piece. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.